Dear participants, good morning to everyone. I am happy to see all of, all of you here in beautiful city Lviv. And uh, I would like to say, finally, we have uh, found uh, the, the chance to visit uh, and meet each other here. This year, this year has become a new challenge for us to organize a conference in a hybrid mode. I am pleased to announce that the fourth International Conference on Design, Simulation, Manufacturing, the Innovation Exchange is open despite any problems. The history of the conference starts in 2018 in Sumy. We found that the conference which unites researchers from such areas as design, simulation, and manufacturing is urgently needed. Now, DSMIE conference series is an international forum for fundamental and applied research and industrial applications in engineering. This year, the conference is organized by Sumy State University, Lviv Polytechnic National University, and International Association for Technological Development and Innovation. The conference is supported by our partners from Technical University of Košice, Kielce University of Technology, University of West Bohemia, Poznan University of Technology, Association for Promoting Innovative Technologies, Innovative Fed, Society for Robotics of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Springer Nature, Easy Chair and Strike Plagiarism. Also, we are grateful to all our industrial partners who supported us during the last four years. Our vision is based on three fundamental principles. The first one implies teamwork to promote and popularize science, technology, engineering, and education. The second one describes the main mission of the conference, discussion and ideas exchange. The third principle certifies that we have to publish cutting-edge research results. The conference focuses The conference focuses on a broad range of research challenges in the field of manufacturing, materials, mechanical and chemical engineering, addressing current and future trends in design approaches, simulation techniques, computer-aided systems, software development, ICT tools, and industry 4.0 strategy, implementation for engineering task solving. I am grateful to all keynote speakers who devoted their time to promoting and popularizing the DSMIE conference series. Thank you very much to keynote speakers of this edition. Professor Vitaly Pasichnik from Kyiv Polytechnic Institute. Professor Katarzyna Antosh from Zheshov University of Technology. Professor Alper Uysal from Yildiz Technical University. Our library is expanding. We have already published six books. Our previous books are indexed by Scopus and Web of Science Core Collection. We are working on adding this year's books to the Web of Science Core Collection too. I would like to thank uh, members of the program committee and invited external reviewers for their efforts and expertise in contributing to reviewing, without which it would be impossible to maintain a high standards uh, of peer-reviewed papers. They devoted their time and energy to peer-reviewing manuscripts. Our reviewers came from worldwide, represent 18 countries and uh, affiliated with uh, more than 70 institutions. Thank you very much. International Association for Technological Development and Innovations agreed on the open access to full papers of the conference series. You can easily visit the website of the conference via the link and enjoy reading. This year we received 175 contributions from 27 countries around the world. After a through peer review process, the program committee accepted 100 papers written by authors from 20 countries. Thank you very much to the authors for their contribution. These papers are published in the present book, achieving an acceptance rate uh, of about 57%.
I would like to pay attention to the participants that extended versions of your research can be published in partner journals using a fast track option. These journals are Management and Production Engineering Review, Archives of Mechanical Technology and Materials, Journal of Engineering Sciences, and Advances in Thermal Processing and Energy Transformation. To sum up, uh, 340 papers have been published. We are strictly following the level of internationalization. Citations from external resources evidence the impact of research results. A similar analysis uh, was carried out regarding visibility issues. These data are important for us while planning the next editions of the conference, particular subtopics. Thank you very much to our team. Their involvement and hard work were crucial to the success of the conference. Professor Gritsai, Professor Stupnitsky, Professor Lapochenko, Professor Pavlenko, Professor Gusev, Dr. Berladir, Dr. Kusi, Dr. Slipchuk, Mrs. Demyanik contributed to the success of the conference. Our motto confirms that team work can benefit future results. Together we can do more for science, technology, engineering and education. I highly appreciate the partnership with uh, Springer Nature and the contribution to all co-editors, Dr. Justina Trojanovska from Poznan University of Technology, Professor Joseph Zayats from Technical University of Košice, Professor Dragan Pirakovic from University of Zagreb, Professor Jose Machado from University of Minyo, Professor Milan Edel from University of West Bohemia, and Professors uh, Ivan Pavlenko and Oleksandr Lapochenko from Sumy State University. Summer School has been launched this year. The hundreds of Bachelor of Science students, Master of Science students and PhD students join us during conference days online. I wish all participants fruitful working days. Let us enjoy the conference together. And uh, let me introduce uh, the Vice Rector Professor Oleg Matvikiv uh, from Lviv Polytechnic National University with the invitation to participants. Dear colleagues, uh, dear guests, dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. It's a honor for me uh, to uh, open, to make some small speech on this conference. Uh, your conferences have already a history. Uh, here we saw a small introduction and it was really impressive. Uh, as for me, it's uh, very important that you have uh, such international team, you have uh, such very broad participants in your conference. Something wrong? So, and uh, once more, I am glad to uh, express uh, on behalf of uh, our rector, Yuri Bobolo, on behalf of our management team, and invite you uh, to this conference and uh, welcome you in uh, Lviv Polytechnic National University. Uh, you know that our university and our region have a great history in mechanical engineering, in uh, uh, civil engineering, in uh, chemical engineering and, any, uh, and many other uh, domains of engineering science. And uh, of course for us it's very important that you are uh, are organizing this conference and you are uh, collecting together the researchers and uh, uh, maybe professors from um, many other schools, from many other teams, from uh, many universities, not only in Ukrainian, but all over the world. So we are happy that you are here. Uh, I, I understand that these coronavirus uh, times and coronavirus uh, problems which appear, they bring also and the new challenges for organizers of such conferences, but also it brings us and it gives us new possibilities because previously we do not use, I don't know about your conference, but usually we do not use such um, hybrid uh, methods of uh, conducting conference in, in real time, in real uh, lectures, in real rooms and online. 
So here, it's for us, uh, it becomes a common way of our communication. And I hope this gives us possibilities to uh, to find uh, our partners, to find some, uh, to establish new research ideas, not only in Ukraine, but all over the world, from other countries, from other universities. So I, give, I uh, want to, uh, uh, to, to wish you uh, good, fruitful collaboration. I wish you to find new ideas, uh, new partnerships, uh, maybe for new projects, uh, for uh, to participate in, uh, in Ukrainian national projects, to participate in the European projects, in Horizon Euro projects. So uh, good luck for your work and uh, fruitful collaboration for you. Thank you. We are very thankful to Lviv Polytechnic National University for their support during conference organization, and we would like to present this uh, certificate of recognition for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I would like to invite to the microphone the acting co-chair of the conference, Professor Vadim Stupnitsky. Uh, dear colleagues, dear friends, um, perfect day for one and uh, all present here. Uh, my name is Vadim Stupnitsky and uh, I'll give him the welcome speech uh, for the conference for him today. Uh, on behalf of uh, the Lviv Polytechnic National University, it's my pleasure uh, to invite uh, all of the great scientists, uh, academics, uh, young researchers, uh, from the from all over the world uh, to attend the international conference of on design simulation and manufacturing the innovation exchange mechanical engineering conference share it uh, and insight into the recent research and the technologies uh, which gains excellent interest with adapts uh, young and brilliant researchers and talented uh, postgraduate students communities the conference meeting goal is uh, to bring together a multidisciplinary group of the scientists and engineering worldwide, their presence and uh, exchange breakthrough ideas relating to engineering. It promotes, uh, promotes uh, top-level research and uh, globalizes quality research in general thus making discussions, uh, presentation more internationally competitive and focusing attention on the recent outstanding achievement in machinery and future trends and need, uh, needs. Um, of course, the challenges posed by the coronavirus pandemic made significant uh, challenges to the conference schedule. Of course, we have uh, such some problems with this. Uh, many leading scientists could not come uh, to Lviv, unfortunately. Uh, however, we propose the hybrid conference uh, option. Um, uh, some of the report will be in Lviv mode in this uh, audience, and uh, some of the reports will have uh, to listen to online. Uh, I hope all of understanding uh, all, all you understanding uh, these um, uh, limitations however i believe uh, it's necessary to constant communication with scientists from different countries in mechanical engineering we are looking forward uh, to an ex excellent uh, meeting with a great uh, scientists from different countries worldwide and sharing new and uh, exciting results in mechanical engineering and mechanical manufacturing. Uh, I'm sure you will enjoy today and uh, the next two days of the meet and uh, networking. Thank you for your participation in our conference. And uh, I'd like to say, uh, uh, I'd, like, uh, I'd like to pay attention to you that uh, this year uh, we celebrated a, a 
100 years from the foundation of uh, our department, mechanical engineering department in Lviv Polytechnic. This is uh, one of the oldest speciality in Ukraine, and therefore, uh, I think that uh, this uh, one of the part of this, uh, this uh, our uh, conference will be dedicated to the, this uh, great event. Uh, I think that not only for us, but for Ukraine total. And uh, thank you for uh, for participation. And uh, we are uh, again meet uh, for the manufacturing engineering session today. Thank you. Thank you very much to Professor Stupnitsky and his local team who was involved during this year. And I would like to say that uh, their contribution was uh, really. <laughs> Thank you. We will start the next session, keynote session number one, and it will be only a single session. And uh, uh, every year we have the chance to invite uh, speakers who make impact to the research and science and can influence to the situation in our country. We appreciate the uh, keynote speakers from different countries who was involved during last years and uh, I am happy to introduce the first keynote speaker this year. Um, Professor Vitaly Pasichnik from uh, Igor Sikorsky Kyiv Polytechnic Institute, National Technical University of Ukraine. He's a well-known scientist uh, in Ukraine and worldwide. His uh, contribution to computer-aided uh, manufacturing, computer-aided process planning, uh, computer-aided uh, uh, research support uh, and digital manufacturing is essential and uh, we are... Everyone knows him. I am sure about it. And uh, uh, the recent research results of Professor Pasichnik devoted to additive technologies. And uh, this is the key field uh, for future manufacturing, for future industry and uh, society as well. And uh, I think uh, his research and his research results and his uh, today's presentation will uh, help you to understand the importance of this area. And uh, you're welcome to ask questions uh, and uh, actively participate in the discussion. Uh, Professor Vitaly Pasichnik, I invite you to the microphone. I would like to remind that <laughs> keynote speech is 30 minutes. Dear colleagues, first of all, I am very glad to see you in, uh, here in beautiful Lviv. Uh, let me introduce you to the all-Ukrainian innovation ecosystem Sikorsky Challenge Ukrainian. The basis of our modern achievement ground on historical scientists and innovation tradition. World-famous chemist, author of the periodic table of elements Dmitry Mendeleev, was the first chairman of examination board at the KPI. Igor Sikorsky was our student and innovator in aviation, has a pioneer of helicopter development. So as our student Sergei Korolev, who was the chief designer of the Serian of space rocket, Zeus on the Voschod 1 rocket, in 1961, uh, Yuri Gagarin made the world first man at space flight. A number of prominent scientists and innovators worked in the KPI as laid the foundation for the creation of a large number of scientific schools in the field of mechanics, electricity, chemistry, welding, and many others. 
Uh, by today, our university is the largest generator and producer of startup in Ukraine. More than uh, 25,000 students attend our university uh, at three levels of education, bachelor, master, doctor of philosophy, 74 scientific schools, and 270 scientific groups are full uh, of active work. The organizer uh, um, of the interaction of this part uh, participating institution in the innovation ecosystem Sikorsky challenge of uh, Igor Sikorsky KPI, which is formally established by a signing agreement between SCU members institution and legal entities of Sikorsky challenge KPI, uh, innovation holding Sikorsky challenge and science park Kievska Polytechnica. Uh, we have real development partner network on the implementation of innovation project. On our basis, an all Ukrainian network of startup school has been launched up to the 18 universities of Ukraine have been involved. Our innovation ecosystem participants to the pupils, students, scientists, and entrepreneurs of Sikorsky Challenge can receive support in the implementation of their uh, project by training at startup school, working in fab labs, a number of university uh, laboratories, passing business incubator of projects and presenting them at the festival of startup projects. We have some access to the grant support for project sponsor investment fund it. SCU area of interest included mainly hardware innovation project in various scientific and technological areas. Uh, getting actively started in um, um, 2012, we got high dynamics of attaching of support for project by investors. Uh, we invite uh, you to participate in a 10 festival of innovation project Sikorsky Challenge Ukraine. And uh, now let me tell you about design and engineering assurance for the customized implant production using additive technologies. Uh, we are currently uh, witnessing the rapid development of additive technology and orthopedics. Specially customized it has become the field of number of advanced innovation, uh, the radically change um, the perception of patient capabilities. Customizing implant become one of first successful application of additive technologies in the medical fields. Uh, our uh, time, many other applications have emerged, uh, such as limb repair producer, where the complexity is um, associated with the fact uh, that are uh, not easy to repair uh, which already made size of implants shapes. Additive technology, uh, due to the ability to accuracy reproduce complex shape, as well as the ability to print uh, contralateral anatomy for use as a reference uh, for anatomical reconstruction is ideal for creating custom implants. Uh, in complex case, the creation of a custom endoprothesis uh, is only possible way to solve the potion problem. Solving a set a problem requires research, a set a task for design and manufacturing of the high quality custom implants in minimal time and cost. Conventional subtractive technology for the manufacturing of parts are an exponential dependence of cost on complexity. The more a complex a part, is by the number of elements, their shape um, and accuracy, the more expensive the manufacturing process, challenging the technologies with the increased number of technological limitations, trimming elements, lack of access to the cutting tool, catastrophic drop in stiffness of part and tools preventing cutting it. A significant difference of additive technology, almost a paradox, is then a more complex the shape of the part is due to shape optimization 
the cheaper it is to make such a part on the additive machine. The structure logical schema of reflecting uh, of our practical experience of the after, implemented on the basis of the Igor Sikorsky Kiev Polytechnic Institute and the Laboratory of Biomedical Engineering at the Institute of Orthopedic and Traumatology of the National Academy of Medical Science of Ukraine. It's now the process of additive production can be divided into three successive technology stages. Pre-processing, processing, and post-processing. It's also possible to consider a more general process um, of manufacturing custom implants and um, uh, accompanying equipment with AT integrated. Uh, the main result of our work, work is set of sequences of custom orthopedic implant creation stage. Next, we will consider the staging in detail and well as two examples of their practical application. Uh, computer tomography or CT and magnetic resonance imaging MRI scans can provide a basic set of pertinent characteristics in determining the choice of features of CT and MRI. One should take into account the different nature of the physical phenomena used the these devices. CT used X-ray radiation which give an idea of the physical state of a matter. And MRI uh, uh, use constant uh, pulsating magnetic field, as well as radio frequency radiation, which provided an information about the distribution of protons, hydrogen atoms, uh, the chemical structure of tissue. Therefore, CT allows a physical scene, not only the tissue, but uh, studying the X-ray density as well, which change with the course of uh, disease. In case of MRI, physical visually um, evaluated is image, uh, the image only. In general, MRI better distinguished uh, soft tissue. The bonus uh, may not be visible. There is not res uh, resonance of calcium and bone tissue of MRI scans and visible only indirectly. MRI is usually pre, uh, um, uh, prescribed for examination of tissue, joint and blood vessel, examination of um, uh, suspicion uh, of the tumor of soft tissue, examination of intellectual nerve uh, structures of uh, the brain and spinal cord, study of spinal cord and brain member membrane, examination of patients with multiple sclerosis and other neurological diseases, as well as stroke patients, study of uh, ligaments and muscles, uh, study the condition of joint surface. Uh, as can be seen, uh, a single study method is not enough to access to condition. Decide on the scope, the future of surgery and hence uh, uh, on the engineering support of custom implants manufacturing and technological means of surgery. This Pfizer um, comprehensive study using CT MRI should be used as initial data for planning and uh, creating custom implant in ancillary structure. When obtained, the result of a number of um, prerequisites should be provided to ensure initial data uh, completeness and uh, quality. CT studies require the minimum possible cross section, metal artifact suspension in structures have already been uh, implanted uh, in the scanned area, noise minimization on image. MRA studies require uh, isotropic voxel, uh, minimum inner slice gap, noise minimization. After receiving CT MRI scans, one should create a virtual and full scale model uh, of the anatomical object. Various programs facilitate 3D model based on tomography data, radian, 3D doctor, simplans, scan LP, simpleware. The first step in creation an individual prototype 
is to process multiple images uh, that have been obtained using CT MRI scanning. Processing included analysis, noise removal, and image uh, segmentation. This work is performed by each section in three study plans. Initial data processing uh, uh, generated STL, VRML, uh, PLY on DXF file. STL format is uh, preferably used to, to manufacture a part uh, on an additive machine. machine. STL file requires analysis and adjustment uh, to currently display and uh, prevent errors of the polygonal grid. When the finished bond model is obtained, it is necessary to prepare data for additive machine implementation. Uh, the uh, presence of the full-scale uh, full model, model on the anatomic object, object. Um, anatomic object, uh, yeah, which scale on uh, one by one, one with color separation and reflection in the uh, future of um, uh, clinical, clinical presentation of the patient bone, bone and soft tissue. It's extremely clean and useful when planning a surgery. The resultant can be divided to you uh, and understand, uh, understand the um, anomaly before the actual surgery. Uh, the whole process can be modeled before the actual surgery, allowing surgeons to choose the best method and reduce time. The main test of surgery planning present on the slide. Uh, CI design uh, should uh, take into account Position, um, position um, uh, on the target organ relative to excess. It is not desirable to the move to rotate the implant in the surgical uh, wound. In this will ensure uh, the uh, surrounding structure. Uh, minimally invasive excess. Minimal incision provided less blood lose the re rapid recovery but uh, prevent implantation uh, of large structure. Assessment of bone quality. Specialized software allows estimated the bone density, which will affect the, the choice of type. Spongery of cortical, which uh, or, um, without um, uh, locking. Direction and length of screw. Design include detection uh, of several zones. Working zone. Um, this is main uh, custom implant zone, which performing the main function in the organ. Primary fixation zone. For orthopedic custom implant, the primary fixation is made with screws. Uh, next, zone of secondary fixation osteointegration. Uh, this is the custom implant bone contact zone, which involves further uh, in growth of bone into the implant structure and actual zone. This is uh, the attachment zone for the impactor implant uh, placement tools. Additive technology become effective uh, and significantly expand the possibilities of engineering support throughout various regular and stochastic structure. Regular structure are divided into two and three dimensional. Stochastic structure can be open and closed. Uh, the solution are integrated into implant design to improve uh, bone tissue um, uh, polymerization, approximation of custom implant mass, and mechanical characteristic to biological owns. Uh, an example uh, of the custom implant printed stochastic randomized structure use is present. Uh, computer aided engineering. Uh, uh, is the main tool for identifying mechanical characteristic of the custom implant based on computer simulation for different boundary conditions uh, that determine the stress, kinematics, radiation aid for individual custom implants. In complex case, um, uh, field ex experimentally may be required to the determine mechanical custom implant characteristics. Uh, the main criteria for optimization are the approximation of the implant weight, 
uh, to the weight of bone under replacement and minimization of load takeoff in the placement area. It's necessary to study the contact area to avoid underloading and overloading certain areas to distribute the load uh, as evenly. On even loading, it can reduce custom implant service life. Custom implant weight criteria is important to ensure patent comfort as signification deviation in custom implant weight from the bone being replaced will create discomfort for the patient. When designing, it is important to ensure the correct and constant location of custom implant in the patient body. This problem is addressed by determining the position and stroke of the screws. Uh, there are actually structures of navigation aimed to simplify the surgery and uh, increase placement accuracy. In most cases, navigation uh, may uh, may be using additive technology method from polymer. Uh, in action high um, uh, surface cleaning of uh, treating formation, conventional machining technology are used. Individual um, a product for implants may be sterilized uh, at the end of uh, production. Latest endoprothesis a special need to be through cleaning to remove any powder particles or, or residues uh, such as dip uh, from abrasive paste or coolant from computer digital uh, control process. Um, additive technology allows create, uh, creating part with very complex geometry, which complicates um, uh, the verification of their quality. The only way to determine the in internal component size um, is to destroy and sample area uh, and use the um, usual coordinate uh, um, uh, method of measurement using a coordinate measurement machine. Internal design are completely incredible and uh, required to use non-destructive testing method uh, to access a product uh, quality. Um, consider the fifth first example. Uh, patient N, um, a 54-year-old, condition after total un, um, arthroplasticity of the right hip. Uh, join a fracture on the right femur neck in um, uh, 2007. Obtaining primary objective information about, about the patient condition. X-ray densitometry allow access to the structure condition of bone tissue in the individual, individual implant fixation zone. Uh, a plastic model printed and the scale um, of one by one is currently the best method of visualization on the fact in the accessible um, uh, area. Using, Using this model, model the, surgeon the surgeon made a final decision uh, on the um, appropriateness of using an individual implant. FDM printed model after first analysis by the surgical team. Blue indicated the ilias support plane, red flanges location, black uh, reference plane of cup reverse side contact with the strongest bone uh, on the cavity bone uh, bed. Uh, cut based determined the correct biomedical uh, position of the future customized implant. Final CAD model of the customized implant with the designation of screw maximum length. Uh, fitting of the navigation system for screw on the plastic metal. The customized implant of the acetabular component made by additive technology, um, selective laser melting. Clinic of orthopedic and traumatology uh, in ADU, performed revision in the prosthesis in the right hip joint removal of endoprothetic component, placing at the customizing acetabular system, revision leg. Consider the second example. Patient V, uh, 31 year old, uh, sarcoma of uh, the femur. 
Obtaining primary objective information about the patient condition. CT and MRI densimetry, densitometry allow accessing the structure condition of bone tissue. The next stage uh, is to determine the anatomical and mechanical axis uh, of the cyst. After them, design of the inner and outer surfaces. After them, design the custom bone. Uh, we need uh, to determine the location and method of secure fixation of the joint to the rod and artificial bone. Next, the calculation, uh, the load, and check the structure of uh, for strength. Uh, the slide allows two design options, basic and alternative. The first uh, option is uh, closing uh, um, basis for bone mass. We cannot find the laboratory in uh, Europe we uh, such a structure could be made quickly. The second design has more mass. It was made in Ukrainian um, during two weeks. Uh, you can see uh, a test model made of plastic. It tested in the size um, and interaction with the joint. Above uh, is one artificial bone made of titanium. Uh, this slide illustrates the entry patch from determining the patient condition um, to uh, the uh, outcome surgery. The operation is clinic uh, for orthopedic and traumatology in adult was conducted in September 2 in uh, 2020. Uh, we will be able uh, the result in November. Uh, 2020 of patient um, and uh, we presented summarizes the author's experience in terms of the engineering support for manufacture of customized implant based on the Igor Sikorsky KPI and the laboratory of biomedical engineering at the Institute of Orthopedic and uh, Tra Traumatology of the National Academy uh, of medical science of Ukrainian. Thank you for your attention and I bless you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Pasichnik, for his uh, and excellent research results and the fantastic uh, uh, contribution to the science. Uh, I would like to uh, suggest you and uh, wish to implement all your ideas. Yes. Uh, and yes. this is the certificate. Mm -hmm. And this is the present for your great ideas. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much, much uh, once again, to Professor Pasichnik. Uh, we are happy that he found time to visit Lviv and deliver this uh, keynote speech. Uh, now, now I would like to present, to present uh, the second keynote speaker, speaker Professor Katarzyna Antos from Rzeszów University of Technology, Poland. She is a well-known scientist in uh, um, decision-making, production engineering, quality assurance, uh, uh, algorithms, uh, physiologic uh, modeling and simulation. And uh, uh, today she prepared uh, a speech for concerning machine learning and uh, I think it's a uh, very, very good, good uh, uh, add, add, add to, the to the conference and to contribute to, to our uh, session. session. Uh, uh, Professor Katarzyna Antos is now online from Zeshov, and uh, I, I invite her to make, make a speech. Hello. Hello, good morning. Thank you for Yes, everything is okay. Um, so should I share my screen, yes? Yes, can you hear me? Hello? Um, can you see my presentation? Okay, so may I start, yes? 
Okay. Hello, good morning once again. Can you hear my presentation? Can you see my presentation? <coughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Katarzyna Antwasz. I, I am from Russian University of Technology. Uh, I would like to first uh, thank you, Professor Nivana, for inviting me for the, this conference to be a keynote speaker. And today I will um, present a subject on machine learning methods supporting machine process data analysis. But before I start my presentation, I would like to introduce some my university and my city. So my university is located in the capital of Podkarpatia province, situated in the southeast of Poland. So actually it's not so far from here, it's only 180 kilometers, but because of the situation I cannot come. Sorry for that. And what about my city? My city, we call them our city like capital of innovation because we are European leader in terms of students numbers. We boast numerous tourist uh, attractions and highly developed infrastructure. And we offer many workplaces in over 26,000 of enterprises. And what I can say to inviting you to my city, we are the one of the safest cities in our uh, country. So uh, my university was established in 1951. Actually, in this year, you are celebrating 70 years anniversary. And today, uh, in my university, we have seven uh, faculties, uh, the Faculty of Civil Environment, uh, Engineering and Architecture, my faculty, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering and Aeronautics, Faculty of Mathematics, Faculty of Electrical and Computer Engineering, Chemistry, Faculty of Mechanics and Technology, and Faculty of Management. Actually, now we have um, nearly 30,000 students, and we have 30 courses of the study. We have 200 laboratories, not only for the students, but mainly for the researchers. And we empowerment to award habilitation in four disciplines and doctoral degree in seven disciplines. We are one of the universities in the Poland that we are training the civil aviation pilots. That's why we have, for this purpose, we have our own aviation training center. So every year we are training 24 pilots, uh, civil aviation pilots. So when you're flying during the world, you can um, you can fly it with our our trained pilots actually. Uh, um, because we are aviation, we have aviation training center. We have also. University Gliding Center in Bezmechowa in Gestade Mountains, actually is very close to Ukraine. Um, as we can say, uh, University of Technology, my university is also a center of culture and of sport. We are collaborating with many universities and uh, companies. Uh, we are collaborating with universities not only in Erasmus Plus program, but also in many uh, research product, pro projects. And uh, with the companies, we are also collaborating with many research products because our um, province is mainly, we have a mainly aviation industry. So mainly we are collaborating with Pratt & Whitney, Pazadel uh, Mielec and all aviation companies in our, our legend. But let's go back to my, the main topic of the presentation, machine learning methods supporting machine process data uh, analysis. So um, one of the absorption of Industry 4.0 is the most advanced digitalization and compressive use of the rising process data. Such action helps to optimize the work of an enterprise on many levels because the information obtained can be used in various contexts depending on the demand. In the assumption of the Industry 4.0, data processing is expected to bring about general changes in production and the spread of cutting-edge technologies will, elbow, will enable a gradual increase of the productivity in manufacturing companies. Therefore, it is important not only to obtain relevant data, but also to develop a concept for the analysis that will allow the use of appropriate methods in order to extract knowledge from them. That's why today uh, I would like to present one of the group of methods that we can use for the uh, extracting knowledge from the data. There are machine learning methods. So that's why for this purpose, uh, you can see the agenda of my presentation. I will say a little about machine learning algorithms. Of course, many of uh, uh, guest knows these methods actually. I would like to uh, tell something about machine learning process. 
And I would like to present some research results, which was uh, made in my university with collaboration with other university. Actually, there is other university in Poland, Lublin University of Technology. And I will close my uh, presentation with some summary. Machine learning algorithms is an application of artificial in intelligence where a computer machine learns from the past experience using input data and makes future predictions. Actually, in the um, machine learning method, so we can divide it into three types. We, with, uh, first one is supervised machine learning methods, unsupervised machine learning methods, and reinforcement machine learning methods. In my presentation, in, my, in our researches, we mainly use two types of machine learning methods. First one are supervised learning machine learning methods. The main goal of these methods are to develop predictive model based on both input and output data. This um, supervised learning method we used mainly for two types of categories of algorithms for the classification and for regression. And here we can use different kinds of methods such as support vector machine, naive base, uh, nearest neighbor, uh, decision trees, London forest, etc. The second group that we use in our researches is our unsupervised learning methods. Uh, the main goal of this method is to discover an internal representation from input data only. And these methods are mainly used for the clustering. And in this group, we can use uh, Gaussian mixture, for example, fuzzy C-means and hidden Markov uh, model. The machine learning <coughs> process uh, consists mainly from the five main steps, actually three main stages, but five steps. The uh, first one is the data collection, so we have to collect data from the process. Then uh, the next main step is data processing. In this uh, stage, we can identify three, uh, three uh, steps like data pre-processing, data processing, and data post-processing. In data pre-processing, uh, we are mainly select the pr proper data. We are cleaning this data, for example, to remove the outliers from, <coughs> from this data. We have sometimes to transform this data in the proper file, and we have to sometimes integrate this data. For these uh, steps, we can use different um, beta pre-processing methods, uh, like, for example, Adobe, Fal <coughs> Adobe Falker um, algorithm, Lunebox, etc. And the next step is the data processing. Here on the step, we use different kinds of machine learning algorithms to develop the predictive models. And uh, as you can, as I told you, you can here we can use different kinds of methods like unsupervised, supervised uh, machine learning methods. And the next steps is uh, data post-processing. And I, this is the most important thing because here uh, we can uh, evaluate our developed models to see the accuracy, the quality of these models. In this um, step, uh, we can use uh, the method like confusion matrix and receive operator characteristic. We call them rock analysis. And of course, the final step is to choose the best model and applicate in the in the practice. So for the evaluation of the models, we can use different kinds of uh, indicators. Here you can, in the table, you can see many types of these indicators, but actually the most important is the accuracy, uh, because accuracy told us how uh, many um, cases is properly classified to the number of the prediction. We call them uh, ability of the uh, prediction model. Uh, machine learning method we use in our researches in many in many, we use in many researches, but today I would like to present you how we used our machine learning methods for the one problem. Uh, the problem was to recognize the cutter state, identify the cutter state like the sharp of, or blunt. So we have only two states of this cutter, and it was classification problem. So we mainly use here the uh, supervised method for the for developing the um, prediction models. And the main goal of this research was to uh, to obtain a model that explains the changes in the cutter state depending on the values of the measured parameters, and also to obtain the ranking of the importance of variables presenting information about the parameters which mostly affect the cutter, a cutter state. So during this research, actually, we have to gather the data from the process. So we did a specialized uh, research work stand. As you can see on the figure, there was a CNNC mining machine has. Uh, so on this machine, we have installed um, 
seven, mainly seven uh, sensors, and from the sensor we have gathering the data. For the researches, we use four-blade myelin cutter and uh, material in column 718. Uh, to gather the data, we have to design the <coughs> uh, special data collecting system. Uh, so uh, it will use mainly industrial computer uh, and uh, other uh, other de devices to gather the information from the process. During the uh, researches, we uh, gathered uh, 2,173 uh, observations, and this observation we have analyzed using different kinds of uh, data preprocessing methods and different kinds of machine learning methods. And now I would like to show you the results of the, uh, our researches. So first model that we will develop to recognize the um, state of cutter, uh, we used uh, here the signal, the data from two signals uh, for the force sensor and acceleration signal. Uh, here we used um, for data preprocessing augmented decay fuller and Lundbox test. And for the first model, we uh, used a, a decision tree because it was classification problem, so we used a classification and, and regression tree. As you can see, we used um, different uh, parameters for the uh, developing the decision tree. The most important was the complexity parameter, CP. Uh, the first uh, development model was um, was uh, designed for a complexity parameter equal 0.001. So on the figure you can see the the model, the tree. So as you can see, uh, the decision tree helps us to identify the decision rules. And in this decision rules, we have um, uh, we have uh, this decision rules told us what are the influences between all the parameters in the process and, of course, of the uh, state of our cutter. Uh, on this slide, you can see the chosen decision rules that we have identified. Actually, these decision rules are uh, identified for the cutter uh, sharp. Yes, so you can see uh, uh, this, uh, the chosen, of course, only the chosen decision rules. But actually, in the practice, um, the use such a model is very, uh, very, uh, very difficult. But before we have used this model, we have to assess the quality of this model. So for this, for this purpose, we use the confusion matrix, as you can see here on the left side. And this confusion matrix told us how many cases in the model was not properly classi classified in the in the um, type. So as you can see from this confusion matrix, only eight from 2,173 observations was not properly classified. So it means that accuracy of this model is 0.9963. It's very high accuracy. And that's why the predictive model, uh, the predictive error was only 0.37%. So we can say that the accuracy and the quality of this model was very, very high. But actually, um, the practical use of such model is very difficult. Therefore, to assess the uh, complexity of the decision tree, uh, we used the cross-validation test. And here you can see the result of cross-validation test. Uh, cross-validation test uh, helped us to find the relationship between complexity parameter and uh, prediction error. And as, as you can see here, um, uh, the optimal size for this data for this model size of three is seven, and the complexity um, parameter should be 0.05. So because the prediction uh, the prediction error is the smallest, as we can see, then in the next uh, size of three, actually the prediction um, uh, error is almost constant. So it's, it's the optimal uh, size of three that we should use for this uh, for this uh, for this data. So for this purpose, we develop this model and for these parameters. As you can see, this model on this uh, slide here, as you can see, is not so complex like the previous model. But um, to uh, to check if its model is okay, so we have to of course to uh, assess the quality of this model, and of course we used uh, the same. Uh, tool like a confusion matrix to identify which uh, cases in this model were not properly classified. And as you can see here, um, more than 40 cases were not properly classified. It means the 
accuracy decrease of the model is 0.9807. Mm, it's also it's decreased because the predictive error is 1.93, but what I can say, the accuracy is, st is still very, very good, so it means that the, this model is very has a very good quality. So, um, this was the pre first predictive model that we developed for our data, but of course we uh, use another machine learning tools to develop another model. Uh, here uh, we can use the, another method like la random forest, uh, we analyzed uh, the data from the same signal for sensor and acceleration signal, and also we use the same data preprocessing. First, to identify the optimal number of three in the model, we have to uh, develop the model for number 300 number of three. But you can see in this table that first we have analyzed the um, uh, out of back error, and as we can see from the table. For the number of three 100, uh, the um, out of back error is the lowest. It means that we should develop a um, model for such number of three. So we have did it. Of course, we developed such model. But as you can see here, uh, uh, here on this um, figure, you can see the relationship between number of trees used in the model and um, the value of the error. As we can see actually here, um, uh, the changes of, of out of back model decrease after 50 number of trees. So actually, in, in this model, it's not we uh, not shoot uh, 100 number of trees, but only 50. It was actually enough. But to assess the quality of this model, we divided our data into data sets and the first day, training data and validation data. And of course, we assess the quality of these two sets of data. It's not that strange that in the training data, the accuracy is equal one. It's very good, it's nothing strange. It's, it should be normal. But the most important thing is to, uh, to assess the quality in the validation set, as we can see on the slide, the validation in the, for the validation data, only six cases were not properly classified. It means that accuracy of this model is also very high because it's all 0.9841 and predictive error is only 1.59%. So it means that quality is also very high. So. Um, we developed also the, another model to check the, uh, the quality of the other models. And for the predictive model number three, we used um, different, data, uh, different kind of data preprocessing because here we used uh, different bubblets. Uh, mainly we used three types of bubblets, Dobeshi, Last Asymmetric, and Best Localized. And we uh, here analyzed the data from two signals for four se sensors and torques. And for this um, data preprocessing, we use also a classification tree. And uh, here on the slide, you can see the best model, the best developed uh, predictive model. The best predictive model was for Vavalet of uh, type Debussy 20 for the level equal four, because uh, actually in the data preprocessing, we used 20 types of Vavalet. And for this 20 types of Vavalet, we have developed the prediction model. And here on the slide, you can see the best model for the Vavalet type 20, the Debussy 20 for the level equal four. And of course, we have to check the quality of the model. And as you can see for the confusion matrix, in this model, only 16 cases were not properly classified. So it means that the accuracy of the model was 0.9926. And the predictive error was 0.74%. So actually, it was also a very good uh, get model. And uh, uh, in this model, we have used on um, we have um, implement also the other advantages of the decision trees, because in this um, data analysis, we have many uh, variables to analyze. It was more than 200 variables after the data preprocessing. So actually, this decision tree um, 
help us to identify the most important variables in the process. So as you can see on the slide here, uh, there are 11 most important uh, variables in the process, which means that these parameters we have to optimize in our process. So uh, the predictive models not only help us, to, uh, machine learning not only helps us to develop the predictive models, but also to identify the most important variables in the, in the process. And uh, the last model that we have to that we have to develop uh, that was the predictive model um, number four. And here, uh, as you can see, we have used also the the same data preprocessing. Uh, we have used uh, different doublets like previously, uh, 20 types of doublets, different types of doublets on, on different levels of these doublets. And um, we also here use the same signal for sensor and torques. And uh, here we can see that we used another uh, machine learning method. It was a logistic regression uh, method. And as uh, you can see on the slide, uh, our developed model, actually on the slide, you can see the uh, influence of regulation parameters alpha and uh, lambda for the model with highest accuracy and actually in this method in logistic regression method the uh, the, um, the, uh, the best model was for a vavelet uh, uh, vavelet coflet um, c level e um, uh, equal five because sorry i forget that we have also here in this model analyzed the coflet vavelet as, as you can see on the slide, we also assessed our developed model using confusion matrix. And uh, as we can see in the recognition of the um, blunt to sharp model, it was very high because only one uh, cases were not were properly classified. In the case of uh, recognition, recognition of the sharp to blunt, it's not so, was not, not so, bad, so good because uh, 220 uh, 20 cases were not properly classified. It means that the quality of the model was not so good because the accuracy of this model was only 0.18964, which means that a predictive error uh, was point. Uh, 46 uh, percent. So, as you can see, uh, when we use the different methods for the, the same data, we can we can uh, we can develop different kinds of models with the different accuracy. And for the summary, as we'd like to show you our uh, developed models, as here you can see that we have used different data preprocessing uh, for different signals for different methods, and we receive different. Um, quality of our developed models. So uh, the most important thing when we are using the machine learning methods in our process analysis, it's not just to uh, use, to take, to take just one chosen method to analyze the process, but actually the most important thing is to develop many times, sometimes many different models with different data to choose the best the best model because as you can see here on the slide the accuracy of the models developed models was very high actually but uh, but as you can see there is a difference between the accuracy of this models and actually finally the difference between predictive errors from the 0.37 to 10 more than 10 percent so uh, so it's important to choose to choose uh, the right method and to develop different different models. Some conclusions. Um, of course, we machine learning methods are very useful for the data process analysis. Actually, uh, we can use different kinds of methods for the different data. But the most important thing is to um, prepare the good experiment to gather the data. Actually, because. Not all the data are very useful for using the machine learning methods. And when we have not, not so very good data, we have to use many uh, different kinds of methods for the data processing to, to clean this data, to select to the proper data. And of course, uh, when we developed our, uh, our, our predictive models, we have to assess the quality of the models using, for example, such indicators like accuracy and confusion matrix to, to check if our model is really good or it's not, it's not so good. And of course, to, we have to develop 
many different uh, predictive models to choose the, the best one for to to the to the for the implementation. Of course, um, these developed models um, and this information that we gathered from this uh, from these developed models now we uh, try to implement in our. A research stand to uh, to gather another information and to check if actually our improvements uh, brings us our, uh, the advantages of the process. So, uh, so uh, to uh, our advantages, sorry, in, in our process. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the uh, information and uh, for the very summary. I would like to uh, I would like to uh, show you some short movie about my university. Okay, thank you again for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Professor Antosh for her outstanding research results. So we are happy that uh, uh, you find time and deliver a speech. Uh, last year, uh, Professor Antosh delivered a technical uh, a presentation and technical session during the conference Interpartner, and uh, I invited here to deliver a speech here as a keynote speech. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. It was really interesting and can be implemented in Industry 4.0, in industrial applications, and maybe someone wants to ask questions. No questions. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Antos. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The certificate of recognition and uh, presence and uh, conference back will be sent to you uh, via postal services. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Have a good time on your conference. Thank you. Last year here in Lviv, I uh, met uh, Professor Alper Uysal. It was uh, another conference. Uh, and organized by Professor Stupnitsky and his team. And uh, his uh, research results within machining area, cutting technologies, uh, as well as manufacturing technology was impressive. And I think it will be interesting for the participants from Sumer, not from Sumer State University, but uh, for, for all others, uh, Ukrainian universities. That's why I invited Professor Alper Uysal to visit online uh, and uh, deliver a speech uh, with the title Sustainable Machining, Improving MQL uh, Performance and Milling of Stainless Steel by Using Nanofluid. He's a professor of uh, Department of Mechanical Engineering of the ELDIS Technical University from Tukki. And uh, now Professor Uysal is uh, online and he is ready to start his presentation. So, dear professor, you can start. Microphone is yours. 
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, may I share my presentation? Not now. At this moment, we didn't see your presentation. Okay, I will try again. Actually, I share, but uh, you cannot see. Uh, you have my presentation, actually. If uh, if you don't mind, uh, you can share my presentation to all the participants. Okay. I canceled my presentation because you didn't see. The LPR, your presentation will be broadcasted from the main PC. Don't worry. Please start your presentation from your PC. Okay. Uh, actually, I can I cannot see I cannot see my presentation here. So in your screen. Yep. Okay. Now we can see your presentation. Okay. You can see my presentation, and I will uh, I will make my presentation on my computer. First of all, uh, I really uh, thank you for the, uh, Professor Vitali for inviting me for this uh, conference as keynote speak. Actually, I would like to be there, but unfortunately, because of the restriction, uh, I will make my presentation online. And also, uh, I would like to say hello from Turkey for all participants, my friends and all the professors. Uh, my presentation title is Sustainable Machining Related to Sustainable Issue, uh, Sustainable uh, Topics Related to Machining. And uh, I will share some uh, experimental results uh, as a case, uh, case study, uh, MPL performance in milling of stainless steel by using the nanofluid. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, say, actually, this is the, my contents. Uh, first of all, I would like to make a brief introduction to my university, Yıldız Teknik University from Istanbul, Turkey. Then uh, sustainability, sustainable manufacturing, sustainable machining, and then I will explain the, our case study related to sustainable machining issues. Uh, Yıldız Technical University uh, is located to Istanbul, and uh, most of you know that Istanbul is one of the most enchanting and lively metropolis in the world. Uh, is the two, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, there is a Bosporus and the straight connection. This Bosporus is the straight connection. The Black Sea and Marmara Sea is an important passage between Europe and Asia. Asia is the Istanbul is the connected uh, city is the European and Asia. At Yıldız Technical University is one of the 13 public universities situated in the Istanbul and also. This is the third oldest university of the Turkey with its history dating back to uh, 1911. Uh, in my uh, my university has 11 faculties, two institutes, uh, three vocational schools, and more than uh, 34,000 students. My department is the mechanical engineering department in the, at, the faculty of, uh, at the faculty of mechanical engineering. Faculty of mechanical engineering has uh, three departments, mechatronic, industrial engineering, and mechanical engineering. And mechanical engineering actually uh, is the oldest uh, department in my university. Uh, 
Ünlü e, mechanical engineering, we have seven different divisions as machine theory, materials and manufacturing is the mine, which is the mine uh, division, hydromechanics, thermodynamics, construction, automotive and mechanics. And my department has uh, 68 academicians, 30 research and teaching assistants and more than uh, 1,600 students. Now I will start the uh, issues. Uh, the core of mainstream of sustainable thinking has become the idea of three dimensions. These are the environmental issues, social issues, and economic sustainable uh, issues related to sustainability. And these are related to people, planet, and profit. Uh, and also there are some intersections, and we, all the intersections, uh, social, environmental, and economic, consist of the sustainable. Uh, there are some other intersections between two uh, these sustainability issues or topics, but uh, for example, social and environmental uh, intersection, the cost of the bearable, social and economic uh, intersections, uh, cost of the equitable, and environmental and economic sections, cost of the viable. But all the intersections, all of the, these issues, intersections, uh, consist of the sustainability. Uh, and sustainability meeting the needs of the present uh, generation without compri compromising on the ability of the future generation to meet those needs. And also sustainability plays a key role, improving efficiency and encouraging uh, environmental consciousness. Uh, this is the important key role of the sustainability. First of all, efficiency, because industry always wants to increase the pro, uh, productivity. And so uh, when we suggest some other methods uh, than the traditional, uh, for the traditional method, we need to improve the efficiency, productivity. And also uh, by improving the efficiency, also we need to, uh, we need to cause some encouraging environmental consciousness uh, by these methods. The satisfaction of basic social and economic needs, both present and future, and the responsible use of natural resources, all while maintaining and improving the well-being of environment and ecology on which life depends, is the main goal of the sustainability. This is the important uh, for the actually uh, developing of the inventing and developing of the sustainability idea. And uh, because of the global warming and also uh, reducing the natural resources, it is now it has now become mandatory for industrial process to become sustainable in every aspect of the production. Yeah, these are the key drivers of the sustainability: cost reduction, energy efficiency, waste reduction and management, health and safety, resource efficiency, and green environment. From these key drivers, uh, we need to consider the environment, economic, uh, the cost effectiveness, and also the uh, society, then the sustainability in the uh, all area, including the manufacturing, consists of. Uh, as a sustainable manufacturing, actually, the, all of us uh, know the manufacturing. Actually, the manufacturing is one of the important elements of sustainable development. And it produces goods which are required to provide the needs of the society. And uh, without manufacturing, actually, uh, we cannot do anything. But, uh, and we know, as we know, the manufacturing is an input, uh, for example, the static material, machinery, tooling, power, and labor are the input. And output system, that, uh, and in general, we have two outputs in the, our manufacturing system, in general concept, uh, our part, processed part, or the uh, final product, and there are some scrap or waste. And in, the uh, in this manufacturing method, uh, the input or the, our resources, uh, for example, power resources or labor resources, uh, are transformed into the products or some semi-products. And here, 
Materials and energy are the two basic inputs to manufacturing, and uh, these basic inputs, as materials and energy, are attained by exploiting the natural resource, for example, material or fossil fuels, etc. So, the, by, uh, in, by increasing the manufacturing and actually by increasing the demand of the human, uh, the natural resources reduce. Emerging, developing, and underdeveloping countries are busy uplifting the living style of their rising population. And you know, actually, every, every year our uh, living quality is increased, but also, uh, actually, this causes the reducing the natural resources. At the same time, and developed countries, and also developed and uh, emerging, maybe underdeveloped countries, don't want to sacrifice their current living standards. Therefore, the average global consumption pattern for goods keeps increasing as the living standards improve, although, although these consumption patterns may slightly vary from the region to region, driven by local cultural, societal, and economic factors. And uh, as a consequence, this means that the growth of the manufacturing is inevitable. And, and among, among the sectors, sectors related to these uh, factors, factors, the manufacturing sector is the main consumer of resources as it currently consumes about half of the world's total energy. This is a really important issue. The manufacturing sector nearly consumes half of the world's total energy. The consumption of critical raw materials like steel, aluminium, zinc, nickel, copper, wood, rubber, etc. for industrial use has increased worldwide or every each year. So, we need to develop sustainable manufacturing or we need to uh, follow up the uh, methods for sus uh, of the sustainable manufacturing. The creation of manufacturing products by using processes which are non-polluting conserve energy and natural resources, and also uh, economic, uh, are economically sound and safe for the employees, communities, and consumers. This is the sustainable manufacturing. First of all, uh, the, our manufacturing method not, uh, consumes non-polluting and conser needs to conserve energy and natural, natural resources. Uh, our method, uh, uh, manufacturing method, uh, needs, needs to be, to be economically economic, economic or cost-effective, cost and, and also the, the our manufacturing method needs, needs to be safe for employers, employers communities, communities, and consumers, and also our, our planet. planet. The adaptation of adaptation of sustainable development in production offers industry a cost-effective route to improving economic environment and social performance. These are the three pillars of the sustainability. Economic, environment, actually being cost-effective, uh, non-pollution or non-hazardous for the planet or environment, and also uh, need, uh, providing to some uh, advantage for the, for, uh, to the society. Actually, our goal is the sustainable manufacturing. This is the, our aim or the, our goal. And we have three pillars, society, environment, and economy. Uh, what means the society? Actually, society means the pillar, people, sorry. Society means the people. And for the people, improve health, being safety, enhance quality of the life, and being ethics. These are the objectives of the society related to people. And the another pillar is the environment. Uh, environment means here the planet in this concept. And cleaner air, water, and soil. Eco balance and efficiency. Greater implementation of the regulations, codes, and uh, regulations and codes are the objectives of the environmental environment pillars. The, uh, another pillar is the economy and prosperity is the means of the, uh, these pillars and new employment 
product and process innovation, large scale new business opportunities are the objectives, and all of them consist of the sustainable manufacturing. Uh, as a subtitle of the sustainable manufacturing, uh, actually my research area is the sustainable machining. Uh, machining is the one of the most uh, one of the most important and major manufacturing process. Uh, it is estimated that machining processes contribute about five percent of the gross domestic product in the developed world. This is the actual huge amount when we consider the all the other uh, manufacturing methods or the all the all the ingredients of the gross domestic product. The indirect impact of the machining due to its effect on the surface integrity and hence on the product life is even greater. The 5% of the gross domestic product is the uh, direct effect and also uh, there are also indirect effect and this is the even greater. Moreover, as economic factors induce shorter product cycles, more flexible manufacturing systems, the importance of the machining is expected to increase even further. So, uh, uh, performing the machining operations as sustainable is really important for our planet, society, and also our industrial partners uh, to make the processes as uh, economic cost-effective. In the machining operations, in the industrial machining operations, some, in some cases, uh, our experimental studies perform the dry cutting, dry machining, but in industrial applications, uh, all the machining operations, nearly, uh, maybe 90, uh, 95 percentage of the machining operations needs to be, need to be performed, need to be carried out uh, as wet machining or flat machining by using the metal cutting fluid. Without using the metal, metal, fluid, uh, metal cutting fluid, we cannot perform the uh, machining operations properly, especially for the metal cutting industry. In, there are some applications for the composite or plastic materials without uh, without uh, applying the cutting fluid, but as a metal industry, metal machining operations, without uh, using the cutting fluid, metal working fluid, we cannot perform the machining operations properly. But there are some problems related to this cutting fluid. In, indiscriminate use of cutting fluid. Surface integrity and product life uh, of our machine part. Operator health, uh, machining cost, energy consumption, and cheap recyclable recyclability. These are the main problems related to the cutting fluid applications. But without nowadays, in, uh, without applying the cutting fluid, especially for the metal machining, uh, we cannot perform the process uh, as we desire. But sustainable machining leads to improved environmental uh, grant needs, reduced cost, reduced power consumption, uh, reduced waste, enhanced operational safety, and improved the personal health. This is the actually uh, sustainable machining chart. Uh, by uh, these are the our profits, product quality, cost effectiveness, and one more friendly and uh, society. In the, uh, in the scope of product quality, geometrical accuracy and surface integrity are uh, better than the conventional, traditional machining operations. As an economic machining cost, uh, as an environmental factor, energy consumption, waste management, and environmental, environment, uh, environmental impact, and as a society, uh, factors with the personal health and safety. The high performance machining strategies with simultaneous minimize, minimization of the their effect on the environment can be characterized by the, by using the this ring. Actually, there are these are the uh, sustainable machining operations. One of them is a dry cutting. But for dry cutting uh, Actually, dry cutting we cannot use uh, maybe in future by developing the by developing the cutting tool technology and also coating technology for some materials we can use the dry cutting operation. But there are also some other alternative methods. 
One of them the cryogenic machine. By using the liquid nitrogen mostly or some carbon uh, carbon dioxide uh, is the alternative method, but mostly liquid nitrogen using the liquid nitrogen are the main uh, main method for the cryogenic cooling. The, uh, instead of traditional with uh, traditional cutting crews or metal working crews, these sent the cutting area liquid nitrogen or uh, dry ice, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen, uh, maybe carbon dioxide to cool the cutting area. And uh, especially for the surface integrity issues, sending the, uh, sending the cutting zone, uh, sending the liquid nitrogen to the cutting zone uh, give us some uh, better uh, machine, machine parts, parts uh, uh, in the scope of surface, surface integrity. integrity. The another, another using the bio, the bio, uh, bio actually, vegetable oils, oils actually, oils. Ester, ester oils or vegetable oils, oils use. These, these are the biodegradable oils. oils. The another, another method, high, high pressure, pressure cooling. cooling. These, these are, are the some advantages and disadvantages, but uh, as an alternative for the uh, our traditional method. And, and the, the last, last one is the MQL, MQL the minimum quantity lubrication, or MQCL, minimum quantity cooling lubrication. And there are some methods, uh, one of them using the some additives, extra pressure additives, or electrostatic minimum quantity lubrication, the another uh, developing method. Uh, as a MQCL method, minimum quantity cooling lubrication, we send the lubrication and uh, with cold air. And also the nano using the nanoparticles uh, to in, uh, to in, uh, to enhance the uh, properties, especially lubricating and uh, thermal conductivity of the our fluid. We use some nanoparticles and send pulverize these nano fluid to the cutting area to in, uh, to increase the effectiveness of the uh, cutting fluid and also the method. These are the main sustainable machining methods. The dry cutting, cryogenic cooling, biodegradable oils, high pressure cooling, and minimum quantity lubrication. And this ring actually consists of the uh, currently widely applied machining techniques with relatively low negative impact on the environment. Actually, uh, low, low negative of the environment and also the human and some, and some of these methods, methods uh, in, some, some of the some, some of the sustainable machining methods, uh, gives extra gives extra properties of the our materials. For example, in the cryogenic cryogenic machining methods, at the after cryogenic machining methods, our machining part has. Uh, has higher hardness than the, our traditional methods. And these properties uh, supply us or give us some other uh, opportunities. Among them, dry machining appears to be most sustainable alternative to conventional fluid cooling or traditional methods, the dry machining. But in the dry machining, as I said before, dry machining uh, says some uh, disadvantages because, especially for the metal cutting, uh, there are uh, there are needing some development, especially for the cutting tool technology and cutting technology, because uh, in the dry machining, the tool tool life is re uh, rapidly reduced, and uh, there are some surface quality problems, uh, especially for the metal machining industry. Near dry machining or the minimum quantity lubrication shows a good promise when dry machining is not feasible as it helps to reduce the use of cutting fluid. In the dry machining is the most sustainable alternative because we don't use any cutting fluid. But in the near dry machining, the another name of the minimum quantity lubrication is the MQL is the popular name nowadays. Helps reduce the use of the cutting fluid. Actually, we. Uh, we don't, don't send the, the cutting, cutting fluid, fluid uh, just, uh, like, like the, the, our traditional method. method. We, we just pulverize the, uh, we just pulverize the cutting fluid, fluid to the machining area, area and, and uh, reduce, reduce the frictions, frictions uh, reduce, reduce the heat, reduce the force, try to reduce the forces, 
and makes to try to make the process sustainable. And also uh, in the traditional method, he just sent the cutting fluid to the area, but by pulverizing the cutting fluid to the M as uh, as in the MTL method, we concentrate the pulverized cutting fluid to the desired area, and uh, we just easily send the, our cutting fluid, our particles. These are the really small uh, small part in the small part, small sizes. And uh, this small size particles, the uh, uh, cutting oil particles, can reach the uh, cutting tool chip friction area and reduce the uh, friction here and also to improve the machining performance. And this is the one of the main advantage of the minimum quantity lubrication. By pulverizing the small size uh, oils to the cutting area can reach the inner size of the uh, intersection between the cutting tool and chip and uh, reduce the friction on these areas and reduce the forces, uh, frictions related heat and also improve the machining performance. The another method is the alternative method is the cryogenic machining and uh, cryogenic machining utilizes utilizes jet of the cryogenic fluid and mostly liquid nitrogen but uh, carbon dioxide also the another alternative. Uh, this liquid nitrogen directed at the cutting zone to provide enhanced cooling and compound several areas including the cryogenic treatment of the tools and workpiece. And also enhancement of the surface pro surface properties and machining performance in machining of various difficult to cut materials. Actually, cryogenic machining is a really good alternative, especially for the difficult to cut materials, uh, such as titanium uh, alloys, uh, nickel alloys, or stainless steel materials. The cryogenic uh, machining, cryogenic process, sanding the cutting area liquid nitrogen is a good alternative to uh, properly cut the, uh, this kind of hard to cut materials. The MTL method's greatest benefits are the cost saving, energy saving, and cutting fluid saving to uh, promote the eco binning and cutting environment. Uh, and also because of the evaporative nature of the heat transfer, it is more effective than the, our uh, convective heat transfer of the flux cooling or high pressure cooling. When the liquid oils are applied as a medium and the impact is put on their good lubrication conditions, friction reduction in the tool chip interface and reduction of the heat generation by the friction. Uh, in the MTL method, typically the flow rate of the uh, cutting fluid medium is in the range 10 to 500 milliliters per half. In, the, in general, in the uh, flood cooling or the wet machining, we sent the cutting area uh, 10, 10 liters uh, per minute, approximately. But in the minimum quantity lubrication methods, we sent the cutting fluid 10 or maximum half liters, 500 milliliters per hour. But in the conventional method, 10 liters per minute, approximately. The MTL technique can be used successfully in the machining process instead of dry and fluid cuttings to eliminate the negative effect on the human health and environment. There are different types of uh, MTL minimum quantity lubrication methods. Uh, these are the two main methods. One of them by using the atomizer, uh, we mix the uh, we mix the air and cutting fluid uh, outside of the system and send the, by using the, this uh, system sent the aerosol through nozzle. We uh, mix the air and uh, cutting fluid outside of the, our system. The another is the oil and air sent to the nozzle and inside the nozzle the uh, aerosol is produced and sent to the cutting area. This is the two main techniques. And by the way, 
MQL method is a good alternative for the dry and fluid cuttings, but especially for the difficult to cut materials or hard machining process, there are some disadvantages. This is the main disadvantage of the uh, small amount of the cooling effects. The MQL method is good for the lubrication, but uh, Eliminating or minimizing the heat or transferring the heat from the cutting zone, minimum quantity lubrication method has some uh, restriction or re restraint. And to, uh, to handle this issue, as a uh, nanoparticle used to enhance the MQL usage of the machine, especially for the difficult to cut or uh, hard, hard, difficult to cut, to cut uh, hard, hard to cut, cut uh, materials such, such as titanium, nickel alloy, titanium alloy, or stainless steel, steel materials. materials. As, as I said before, nanometer uh, uh, MQL method is really good for the lubricating because uh, by pulverizing the cutting fluid in the small size, can reach inner side of the uh, intersection between cutting tool and workpiece and reduce the friction. So this is really good for the lubrication effect, but uh, the, cutting the cutting fluid, fluid thermal condu conductivity, conductivity is really low. low. Therefore, Therefore, the uh, transmit, uh, transmitting, the, uh, transmitting the heat from the cutting area is low in the MQL method. To enhance these properties of the uh, cutting fluid, we need to add nanoparticles. By using the nanoparticles, uh, actually by, by adding the nanoparticles to the fluid, we produce, we obtain nanofluid. And by using the, these nanofluid, MQL method, uh, effectiveness of the M MQL method is increased for both, uh, for both issues, uh, lubrication and also heat transfer. And uh, with this way, by using the nanofluid, uh, cutting, cutting force, cutting, cutting temperature, surface of the workpiece, workpiece and tool wear uh, can be reduced. And uh, now I will start the explaining the case study related to usage of the nanofluid uh, in the MQL system for milling of stainless steel during milling of stainless steel material. This is the, uh, my case study. Uh, we performed a project related to this issue and finished, and I would like to present uh, my results with you in the, this session. The cutting tool wear, surface roughness, cutting temperature, and chip forms were investigated during the milling of the 304 uh, Eustatic stainless steel. In the MQL milling method, uh, commercial vegetable cutting fluid was used, and experiments were also performed in dry cutting. Additionally, nanofluids were prepared by adding the various nanoparticles to the cutting fluid, and performance of the MQL method was improved by using the nanofluid. This is the, our experimental setup, uh, milling machine, uh, milling machining center uh, was used. Uh, this is the infrared thermometer to measure the cutting tool, uh, cutting temperature, sorry. There are two nozzles. Through the two nozzles, we sent the uh, cutting fluid. We sent the uh, cutting fluid to the cutting area. This is schematic illustration, and this is the. Uh, there is another uh, image for the real setup. Blue nozzles are the, our MQL nozzles. In MQL meaning, the micro lubrication system was used like that, and uh, as a cutting fluid, we use commercial vegetable cutting oil. Uh, we prepare the nanofluids and uh, nano, uh, nanofluids in general nanofluids nanofluids have nanofluids have uh, some problems related to sedimentation homogeneity homogeneity and sedimentation to uh, to handle this issue we prepare a mixer and uh, this mixer during the whole, uh, during the whole process the mixer always mixed our nanofluids, and we can uh, uh, we can eliminate the sedimentation and homogeneity problems. We always mix our nanofluids during the process. Uh, 
as a nanoparticles, nanografen, multivolt carbon nanotube, and nanomolybdenum disulfide uh, were used were added to the commercial vegetable cutting fluid. Nanografen and nanomolybdenum disulfide particles were added to the commercial vegetable cutting fluid at uh, 0.5, 1, and 2 weight of percentage. And multivolt, car uh, multivolt carbon nanotube particles were added to the base fluid as 0 0.1, 0 0.15, and 0 0.2 weight percentage of the uh, word percentage to obtain the nanofluid. There are some differences between the addition ratio because of the uh, because of the viscosity of the nanofluid. By adding multivolt carbon nanotubes, viscosity increased rapidly. So, uh, addition amount of the uh, addition amount for the multivolt carbon nanotube needs to be lower than the other particles because viscosity is really uh, is rapidly increased, and uh, we cannot pulverize the nanofluid to the cutting area. Before the uh, before starting the process, the nanoparticles were dried, and also some others uh, dispersant uh, were added to obtain the homogeneous mixtures, and these mixtures blended by using the homogenizer. In the MTL method, the another important thing is the nozzle angle, nozzle distance, and nozzle tip diameter. To compare the results, to compare the results, nozzle angle, nozzle distance, and nozzle tip diameter need, need to be safe, all the uh, machining conditions, machining operations. And the results, uh, firstly, uh, we will check the tool wheels. And uh, after six minutes of the milling by dry conditions, tools were broken. But by using the MPL method, without nanofluid, just using the uh, pure vegetable cutting tool, commercial vegetable cutting tool, uh, there is not any tool breakage. Uh, and also flank wear decreased with increase of the MPL flow rate by uh, applying to more cutting fluid or pressure air mixture to the cutting zone affects the uh, positively affects the MPL efficiency. And also lower flank tears were measured by using the coated tools than the uncoated cutting tools. When we uh, apply the nanofluid in the MPL method, in this case, the, uh, the upper line is the minimum quantity lubrication using the vegetable cutting fluid, pure cutting fluid. But the others, other TV lines is the nanofluid. In this graph related to graphene, by using the uh, graphene nanofluid in the MPL method, it's reduced, really reduced to flank tears when we compare the pure vegetable cutting fluid. And also lower flank tears uh, by using a scanning electron microscope, we can observe, we can compare the results easily. The, another, uh, these are the uh, some other scanning microscope images uh, by using the pure graphene and uh, pure and different ratios graphene uh, added with nanofluid. We can easily see the differences on the cutting tool, uh, tool wheels. And also, the, the, uh, and also, we compare the pure vegetable cutting fluid and uh, multivolt carbon nanotube added uh, nanofluid as uh, in the scope of flank tears. And also, lower flank tears were obtained by using the nanofluid by using by adding the multivolt carbon nanotube to the our vegetable cutting fluid. The another re result is related to adding the nanofluid, uh, adding the multi uh, molybden disulfide to the nanofluid. The, these uh, graphs is related to that. When we compare the all the nanofluid addition, uh, graphene gives the uh, lower, the lowest result obtained for graphene when we compare the flanky results. 
and then multiple carbon monoxide gives the second one. And uh, when we investigate the, these graphs, the, by adding the molybdenum disulfide to the vegetable cutting fluid, reduce the plant yield, but not as much as the adding uh, graphene or multiple carbon monoxide. But also adding the nanoparticles as molybdenum disulfide gives some uh, ad, uh, supplies us some advantage, but not as much as the other nanoparticles. This is because of the thermal conductivity of the carbon-based nanoparticles. Nanographen and multiple carbon nanotubes have good lubrication properties and also high thermal conductivity. But nanomolybdenum disulfide has only good lubrication properties. Thermal conductivity of the nanomolybdenum disulfide is really low. When we compare the surface roughness results, Surface, uh, you can see from these uh, graphs also, the, surface, the high surface roughness is obtained in the dry cutting and also by uh, using the minimum quantity lubrication, reduce the surface roughness. And adding nanoparticles also reduce the surface roughness. When we compare the cutting temperature, also similar results were obtained. Dry is the maximum. Minimum quantity lubrication has some beneficial to on reducing the cutting, uh, cutting temperatures. And nanofluid, especially for the nanographene addition, uh, give us the lowest cutting temperature. And also chips, uh, by in the dry cutting, we uh, we have long and short chips, and this is not, uh, this is non, uh, we, we wouldn't like this kind of chips during the machining operations. But by using the minimum quantity lubrication, by sending the small amount of cutting fluid to the cutting area, we can obtain uh, most uh, suitable or uh, desirable chips. Thank you for attention and listening to me. Thank you very much to Professor Alper Sal for his outstanding contribution to the SMIE conference series. And thank you very much for your time, expertise, and sharing your recent research results. Uh, your certificate of recognition as well as presence and conference back will be sent uh, via postal services uh, uh, during next week. Thank you very much once again. Uh, I would like to sum up. Uh, now we completed three keynote speeches. Uh, this session is officially closed, uh, and we will meet uh, in 20 minutes at 11.20. Thank you.